Welcome to a lecture on the multi-step income statement and classified balance sheet. This lecture is provided as a component of Chapter 5 of the Free Financial Accounting Textbook. And you'll notice that in this spreadsheet that we're presenting, this is Lizzie Incorporated. It's the same case that we've been working on from Chapters 1 through 4. Everything that has changed in this case is uh, highlighted in gold. As always, the link to Google Docs is going to be provided in the Free Financial Accounting Textbook. So first let's start with the chart of accounts. Uh, this is the first thing that we do. We update uh, the chart of accounts for more information that we're going to require in order to produce the multi-step income statement of classified balance sheets. So here's the four accounts, that, five different accounts that we're adding. Sales returns and allowances, loss on disposal of property, interest income, income tax expense, and income tax payable. So let's go over to the general journal. And again, everything, this is Lizzie Inc. again. This is the same as Chapter 4. The only differences are highlighted here in gold. So let's look at New Journal Entry 8. And Lizzie purchases some property, plant, and equipment for $1,000 of cash. And she plans on using this in her business for many years to come. But look at Journal Entry number 10. On December 31st, one day later, she has to sell it back to the dealer. She decided that she didn't want it. Had a little bit of buyer's remorse. So the amount of money that the dealer gave her was $625 and she had to reduce the property, plant, and equipment account by $1,000. In order to make the journal entry balance, she had to record a loss on disposal equipment. So she, it was on the books for $1,000. She received $625 of cash, so the loss is $375. And this is notable because on the multi-step income statement, we're going to highlight non-operating revenues and expenses. And this loss on disposal equipment should not be lumped together with her operating income. Uh, so we're going to break this out separately. This is part of, of breaking that information out separately. Next, on um, December 31st, a customer who had purchased some goods from Lizzie back on November 30th returned $500 worth at, uh, at on December 31st. So the customer owed $500 less in accounts receivable. And rather than directly reduce sales, debiting the sales account, which would reduce sales, we set up this new account, Sales Returns and Allowances, in order to capture uh, all of the returns. This is a contra revenue account. It reduces the net revenue. And henceforth and forevermore in accounting, anytime you talk about sales, there's going to be a distinction between sales, which is the gross amount, and net sales, which is sales minus sales returns and allowances or, or possibly sales discounts. Okay, next let's look at uh, December 31st, another entry at year end. Lizzie reconciled her bank account, discovered $6 of interest income. So she increased her cash balance by $6 by debiting it and recorded interest income. Again, this is a non-operating income, so it's going to be broken out. Uh, journal entry 14 was previously uh, used in, in uh, uh, chapter 4, but I highlighted it here because it has interest expense that had been accrued. And uh, interest expense is something that's going to be captured uh, as a non-operating income and expense on the multi-step income statement. And finally, the last thing that we do, the very last journal entry generally when we close the books, is we look at the income before taxes and you have to estimate what the income taxes payable are. In this case, uh, Lizzie did an, uh, an estimate and estimated that, that her expense related to the income before tax that was generated during the period was $550. So all of these journal entries, the new journal entries, were posted to the new accounts. Here's the five different accounts that were added to the general ledger. And this is, the, again, same spreadsheet. We've highlighted in gold uh, the new accounts. And the, uh, the, uh, uh, the journal entries have been posted to the general ledger. So let's skip over to the trial balance. We run our trial balance, and hey, what do you know? The trial balance balances, so now we can go and produce our financial statements. And here's our classified income statement. You'll notice this is different, and I've highlighted in gold the differences. Now we have net sales, so sales less sales returns and allowances. Uh, we've broken out the product cost, put that uh, as a separate item, and then drawn a line net sales minus product cost, or cost of goods sold, and that is gross profit. Uh, real interesting cost of goods sold. If you think of inventory as the cost of the goods, what it costs you to either manufacture them or purchase them, uh, after you've sold them, it becomes cost of goods sold on the income statement. Uh, next, Lizzie lists her operating expenses, and 
she deducts her operating expenses from the gross profit to come up with income from operations. And after deducting the the other expenses and losses and adding the other income and gains, she comes up to income before tax, in which case after that she estimates her income tax expense, and there is the net income. So we've broken this out to provide more meaningful information for the uh, the reader of the financial statement. Uh, there's the same old retained earnings statement. Let's look and see what's different on the classified balance sheet. Now we can see that uh, the current assets are clearly identified, 22,206, and current liabilities of 6,000. For fun, you should do a real quick back of the, back of the envelope current ratio. How's Lizzie looking from a current uh, ratio standpoint? Okay, I do have on here the statement of cash flows, which we haven't covered yet, but I have the, the statement of cash flows worksheet, uh, which we'll, we will study later. I also put on here the intercompany analysis and intercompany analysis tabs. Uh, both of those are, uh, uh, are in the uh, Chapter 5 earlier in the uh, chapter, uh, but you can see here where the actual numbers are. So uh, the differences on the statement of cash flows is you have to break out losses and gains on the, in the operating section of the uh, statement of cash flows. Uh, you can think of this as it's, uh, we're including the, uh, the cash uh, used, uh, generated from the losses. So when we actually sold the, uh, the product or if we sold the equipment, that cash is down here, that's $625. So the, the, uh, the loss has to be uh, uh, added back here because it was deducted out of net income. This will mean more for you when we study the uh, statement of cash flows. And the last is deferred, tax ca deferred taxes. Again, we add that back because it's not included in net income because uh, we deducted out income tax expense, but we haven't paid it yet, income tax payable, so it's you know, kind of like the government's lending you money. So this is the, uh, uh, the full case, the full mechanics. Uh, this is presented more in detail in Chapter 5 of the Free Financial Accounting Textbook. Please study hard, and I'll uh, see you back on YouTube.